Literary Elements Project, also called the LEP. It sounds menacing, it sounds terrifying, and well, maybe it sounds a bit overwhelming? Don't run away yet. By the end of this video, you will be an expert on the LEP, or at the very least, you will feel more at ease as you dive into your own LEP. We will review each part of the Literary Elements Project, plot, conflict, setting, characterization, theme, and style, using movie clips to provide examples. These literary elements enrich the story being told. Plunging headfirst into these elements will give you a deeper understanding of the story the author is telling. So let's get started. First is plot. Plot is the sequence of events that occur within a story and the relationship between these events. Simply put, plot is how the story unfolds. Generally, the plot can be divided into five main parts. The setup or exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. Let's dive deeper into the plot with the movie The Lion King. As the movie begins, the audience is immediately presented with a scene that is the setup for this African tale. A story setup sets the stage for the events within the plot. The story is set in motion as Rafiki raises Zimba high and presents him to the animals of the Pride Lands. After the setup, there are many events that build the story to the climax. These are the events of the rising action, and their relationship and sequence is key to the entire plot. Long live the king. What am I going to do? Run away, Simba. Run. Run away and never return. Look hard. You see, he lives in you. The death of Mufasa from the Wildebeest Stampede, Scar convincing Zimba to run away forever and Rafiki showing Zimba that his father lives within himself are a few crucial moments in the rising action. The pinnacle moment of a story is called the climax. It is when the crisis reaches its greatest point and is the turning point of the story. Murderer! No, Zimba, please. Tell them the truth. Truth, but truth is in the eye of the bug. All right. All right. I did it. So they can hear you. I killed Mufasa. Scar confessing to the murder of Mufasa is the climax of the Lion King because Scar's evil ways are finally exposed and the false guilt that Zimba had been carrying is finally wiped clean. The falling action consists of the moments that occur after the climax which contribute to the outcome of the story. Zimba defeating Scar plays a major part in the end of The Lion King. The resolution ties up the loose ends and pulls all the events together. It is the end or result of the story. Zimba takes his place as King of Pride Rock, and a new heir to the throne is born. There are four types of conflict. Man versus man, man versus nature, man versus society, and man versus himself. Let's look at the help for examples of each conflict. First is man versus man. This is when a character has an argument or disagreement with another character. <laughs> This conflict is between Hilly and Skeeter because Skeeter purposely mistyped the newspaper ad. Second is man versus nature. This is when the character has a problem with outside forces they can't control. This could be weather, animals, or land. We got married because I 
was pregnant. Then I lost it a month later. Johnny wants a kiss now. What's he gonna do with me? Celia Foote struggles against nature as she is unable to keep a pregnancy. Next is man versus society. This is when a character disagrees with the laws, beliefs, or values of a society. These women raise white children, but they can't even use the toilets in our houses. Minnie, are you in there? You are fired! In this clip, the helper required to use the outdoor bathroom instead of the white family's bathroom. This represents a conflict with society because the entire white community creates this rule for the help. Lastly is man versus self. This is when a character develops an internal struggle between his thoughts and ideas. Mosquito. What if you don't like what I got to say about white people? Abilene fights against herself about doing the interview for Skeeter. Setting, where a story takes place. The images that come to mind when we hear this word usually consist of castles, villages, and cities. However, when setting is used as a literary element, it has four different and unique instances. Setting as historical or geographical information, setting as the antagonist, setting as mood, and setting as symbolism. I know, it sounds complicated, but let's take the Hunger Games movie and explain each type of setting further. Setting as geographical or historical information tells the reader when and where the story takes place. From this clip, it is clear that the Hunger Games is taking place in the middle of a barren field, surrounded by an endless forest. This shows the viewer the geographical location. An antagonist represents the opposition or resistance. So the setting as antagonist is when the setting is creating conflict or opposing a character. In this clip, the fire is the antagonist against Katniss's life, as it threatens to surround her and take her life. The third type of setting is the setting to establish mood. This type of setting is used to create a specific feeling within the reader. Primrose Everdeen. Where are you, baby? Come on up. Well, come on up. The piercing silence of the crowd and bleak gray and blue tones of the setting create within the reader a feeling of desolation and absurdity. These aspects of the setting cause the reader to feel the hopelessness of Katniss's family and the abnormality of a game where children are selected to kill or be killed. Finally, when setting is used as symbolism, it is used to show something bigger within the story. It represents something beyond its surface meaning. Hope. Hope. It is the only thing stronger than fear. A little hope is effective. A lot of hope is dangerous. A spark is fine, as long as it's contained. So... So... contain it. The rose garden setting represents something bigger and beyond the actual roses. The roses in which President Snow sits symbolizes the piercing evil that lies beneath his appearance. From the outside, he seems to have the nation's best interest at heart, but when provoked by Katniss, his thorns are exposed. Characterization is based on one character and the traits that develop that character. It is simply how the reader or viewer gets to know that character. It is supported through four techniques, thoughts of the character, actions of the character, narration, and dialogue of the character. We're going to go through examples using Woody from Toy Story as our character. Characterization through dialogue is when the character shows a particular trait through what he or she is saying. For example, in Toy Story 1, Woody uses dialogue to show his boldness and leadership in the toy meeting. Okay, first item today. Uh, oh yeah. 
Has everyone picked a moving buddy? What? Moving buddy? You can't be serious. Well, I didn't know we were supposed to have one already. But we have to hold hands. Oh, yeah, you guys think this is a big joke. We've only got one week left before the move. I don't want any toys left behind. Characterization through thought is when you can tell something about the development or personality of the character through the thoughts he or she has. This can be illustrated when Woody thinks aloud and is confident he is Andy's favorite toy. Well, in a couple of days, everything will be just the way it was. They'll see. They'll see. I'm still Andy's favorite toy. Characterization through action includes a character's action or what he or she is actually doing. This brings out a trait in the character. In Toy Story 2, Woody is determined to get back to Andy and the other toys, so he decides to jump up and take action. Wait! 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 Where are you going? You're right, Prospector. I can't stop Andy from growing up. But I wouldn't miss it for the world. No! Buzz! Yes? Yes? I'm coming with you! <laughs> Lastly, characterization through narration is based on the narrator describing a character. Let's look at another example. Andy narrates that Woody is always there for him and is a loyal friend. But the thing that makes Woody special is he'll never give up on you. Ever. He'll be there for you, no matter what. Theme is best described as a universal truth. It is the underlining message found in the story that can be applied to life in general. Let's look at Remember the Titans for some examples of theme. In the following clips, the idea that brotherhood is not based on color shows the truth the boys found in the story. Only Ken's allowed in here. Alice, are you blind? Don't you see the family resemblance? That's my brother. Congratulations, coach. All right, thank you, coach. You did a good, good job. job. Thank you. I know football. What you did with those boys. You were the right man for the job, coach. Your Hall of Fame in my book. Another example of theme shows the team coming together in unity to become stronger. The following clips illustrate how the team found this truth. If we don't come together right now on this hollow ground, we too will be destroyed. Just like they were. You really stuck him, Campbell! Yeah, I love me a little contact, Petey! Left side! Strong side! Left side! Strong side! Left side! Strong side! Left side! No, style is not the crazy clothes you wear, or maybe see people wearing. Style is the author's choice of words, and shaping of sentences and paragraphs to emphasize significant ideas or classify his work within a time period. Style is what makes each author unique. For example, the notebook is full of stylistic elements. Some of these elements include foreshadowing, repetition, similes, alliteration, and personification. Similes are a comparison using like or as. In this clip, listen as Ali describes the scenery to be like a dream. I think I've heard it before. It's like a dream. Personification occurs when human-like characteristics are applied to non-human things or animals. Noah describes love as weakening the soul and planting a fire in the mind. The best love is the kind that weakens the soul, that makes us reach for more, that plants a fire in our hearts and brings peace to our minds. And that's what you've given me. That's what I'd hope to give to you forever. Repetition is another type of style used in the notebook. Repetition is the repeated use of a word or phrase in a passage. Noah is very emphatic with his emotions and repeats phrases when he wants to make sure his point is made clear. He continually asks Allie, what do you want? Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Phew, we did it. We made it through all the parts of the LEP. Don't forget, these parts are plot, conflict, 
setting, characterization, theme, and style.